In this video, we'll go over 20 true or false statements about the Burning Crusade expansion, in which I'll give you a prompt, and then you'll have 5 seconds to answer whether it's fact or crap. Then I'll give you a grade at the end of the video based on how many you got right, so let's get started. One of the best rotations for Warlocks was to spam Shadow Bolt and nothing else. Fact. They had a couple of talents and abilities, including a talent that allowed them to sacrifice their Succubus pet, which increased their shadow damage by so much that their highest DPS was literally to just spam Shadow Bolt and nothing else. TBC is when Blizzard removed magic immunities from bosses and resistance gear from raiding. Crap. There were still some bosses, like the Fel Reaver and Tempest Keep, who were still straight up immune to schools of magic. The Fel Reaver was immune to all poison damage, for example, and some fights still required resistance gear. But the Burning Crusade was the last expansion that had the widespread use of resistance gear, as there was a little bit of it in Wrath of the Lich King and even a tiny bit of it in Cataclysm, so it wasn't the expansion that it fully died in. With Paladins and Shamans going cross-faction, TBC was the first expansion with no faction-specific abilities. Crap. Prior to the Burning Crusade, only Alliance players could be Paladins, but with the addition of Blood Elves to the Horde, the Paladin class became available to both sides. In an attempt to keep the factions separate, two faction-specific seals were added to the game. Alliance Paladins got Seal of Vengeance, and Horde Paladins got Seal of Blood. And oddly enough, the two seals had completely different game mechanics. They didn't just have different names for the same ability. Also, all of the priest races had their own specific spell unique to them. And shamans still have faction-specific abilities today, with heroism and bloodlust. The BM Hunter rotation was so simple, it could be macro to one button. Fact. The BM Hunter rotation was basically just weaving in steady shot with auto shots, and using kill command off cooldown, which wasn't on the global cooldown, and making sure their pet was attacking the same target. All of this could be done on one macro at the time, and I'll have that macro on screen if you want to know what it looked like. Alliance players organized a widespread boycott of Alteric Valley because they kept losing to the Horde. Fact. Alliance players on a whole organized a boycott of the battleground in order to bring attention to Blizzard a major flaw of the battleground that was introduced with the reinforcements mechanic being added to that battleground near this expansion. With reinforcements, the Horde could just turtle at Iceblood Graveyard and win every time with almost no chance of the Alliance being able to break through. So to solve this problem, Blizzard moved the Horde starting point further back in the map, which made it a lot more difficult for Horde players to pull off the turtle method and, thanks to all of the other Alliance advantages, kind of balance out the battleground and fix the problem. Well, kind of. The battleground still kind of favored the Alliance a little bit more than it did the Horde after that. At launch, some gear from Karazhan, the first raid of the expansion, was worse than heroic dungeon gear. Fact. Some pieces of gear from the first raid of the expansion, Karazhan, were actually worse than some pieces of gear from Heroic Dungeons. So Blizzard put in a buff to the gear later on in the expansion so that it would actually be better, and give people a reason to run Karazhan over Heroic Dungeons. Before the Burning Crusade, gear didn't have any gem slots in them. Fact. Jewel crafting was added with the Burning Crusade so gear with gem slots in them wouldn't have existed before jewel crafting. Guild banks were added to the game with the Burning Crusade. Fact. Before TBC, players would just trade everything with each other, and sometimes they would even have an alt whose sole purpose was to store stuff for the guild. Inscription, and by extension glyphs, were added to the game in the Burning Crusade. Crap. Inscription was added with Wrath of the Lich King. Jewel crafting was added in TBC though, so there was a profession added to the game with this expansion. It just wasn't Inscription. 
Kel'thas was unkillable when first available because of a massive amount of bugs and overtuning. Fact, there was tons of them, but some of the bugs are kind of interesting, as one of the bugs was solved by another bug. During the intermission phase, all of the adds that died will come back to life. But while they were dead, they were still gathering aggro, which meant they would make a beeline for the healers as soon as they rezzed and kill them. And because of this bug, it was impossible to kill Kel'thas. Until one of the tanks found out that the legendary staff, which drops during the fight, generated a tiny amount of threat whenever it was used. And the staff didn't have a cooldown, or even a global cooldown. So they could spam use the ability in a macro like 20 times per press, in order to get aggro on all the dead mobs which allowed them to counteract this bug with another bug. But they still couldn't kill the fight because of a whole bunch of other things wrong with the fight that weren't fixed until an unannounced hot fix later on in the future. The barber shop, which allows you to change your hairstyle, was added with the Burning Crusade. Crap, the barber shop was added in Wrath of the Lich King, so you couldn't actually change your character's hair for the first two expansions. And then later on, the barber shop got an upgrade to allow you to change other things about your character. The average hardcore raider needed about 10 different consumables for each raid night, as opposed to the four we use today. Flask, food buff, potions, and runes. Fact. Flasks and elixirs could be used at the same time. But not only that, you could also have multiple elixirs up at the same time, along with your flask, food buffs, and a few other random buffs. The normal raid buffs needed for BFA is a flask, food buff, an augment rune, and potions. An average raid of about 3 hours or so would require about 3 flasks and a 20 stack of food, potions, and runes. Now on screen, I'll have a list of the average raid buffs a caster had to bring with them to raid. You could stack certain food buffs, there were a couple of random buffs out in the world that gave you raid DPS increases, plus all of the elixirs and flasks you had to bring. If you were a hardcore raider, you had to go out and farm all of these things for every raid night. Illidan was the final boss of the final raid of Black Temple, and that's why we have a Black Temple time walking. Crap, Illidan wasn't the final boss of the expansion, and wasn't even in the final raid, despite all of the marketing materials for the Burning Crusade featuring Illidan prominently. This didn't happen again until Warlords of Draenor, when Grom was promised to be the final fight at the end, and ended up as Archimonde at the last second. The first tier of flying mounts only increased your movement speed by 60%, and were very slow. Fact, the default training of flying mounts only increased your movement speed by 60%, and were actually slower than epic ground mounts, and really incentivized trying to farm out the gold needed to buy epic flying, which was 280% movement speed, which was a gigantic improvement to the flying mounts. The first tier of movement speed for flying mounts wasn't increased to 150% until Wrath of the Lich King, which is what it's at today. With flying added to the game, Outside of Outlands, you could only fly within major cities. Crap, you could only fly in Outlands during the Burning Crusade. All flying mounts would have this little caveat on them, stating that they could only be used in Outlands. It wasn't until the revamp of the old zones with Cataclysm that players were allowed to use flying mounts in the old world. But that revamp didn't apply to Silver Moon or the Exodar and that's why you still can't fly in those major cities even today. With Bloodlust being added to the game in this expansion, it didn't give the Sated debuff, so it could be chain cast by multiple shamans. Fact: Bloodlust was added to the game in TBC, and worked basically like it does today, except it didn't give the Sated debuff and only worked on your party members, and not your entire raid. So you could chain cast Bloodlust on a party if you had enough shamans in it, which was something that was done by a lot of raids, and kind of the reason they added the Sated debuff. Paladins received a taunt ability in TBC, which, with a few other changes, allowed them to tank. Fact: 
Paladins didn't receive a taunt ability until the Burning Crusade, which, with a few other changes, like getting a few buffs to their damage reduction, allowed them to actually tank stuff, whereas previously only warriors were viable tanks. With the addition of vehicle combat, the battleground Strands of the Ancients was added to the game. Crap, Strands of the Ancients wasn't added to the game until Wrath of the Lich King, and also vehicle combat wasn't added to the game until Wrath. But there was little nuggets of Blizzard experimenting with types of vehicle combat with some of the quests you did in Outlands. The Burning Crusade had more dungeons added to the game than any other expansion. Crap, the Burning Crusade had 16 dungeons, not including any raids. Wrath of the Lich King also had 16 dungeons added, so technically it's tied for the most. The reason TBC had so many dungeons was mainly because they reused a lot of the same assets for a lot of the dungeons and some of them are located in little clusters, where three or four of the dungeons were right next to each other. And the point of the game with the most amount of dungeons was Classic WoW, which has like 20 of them, I think. TBC added a new alchemy lab in the Shadow Labyrinth, keeping true to alchemy labs only appearing inside of dungeons. Crap. The Burning Crusade was the first expansion to have an alchemy lab in a major city, as they added one to Shatrath. Before the Burning Crusade, there were only two alchemy labs in the game, one located in Skolomance and the other in Blackwing Lair, and alchemy labs were required to create flasks. So having one in a major city was a much loved convenience, before they removed alchemy lab requirements later on in Wrath of the Lich King. Alright, and that's the end of the quiz. I'll have a grading scale on screen to see how well you did. If you got at least 14 right, you pass. I took your feedback from the last one I did and put in a lot less trick questions, so I hope you guys liked it. If you'd be interested in a Wrath of the Lich King version of this, I'd love to hear some sample questions down in the comments.